Hiya. Uh, I'm in COVID lockdown at the moment, and I thought it would be a good opportunity to fix a fault that I've had with this TX X1000R deck for a little while now, and just not got round to fixing it. Uh, unfortunately, now I've taken it to pieces, the fault's gone away, uh, which is frustrating. Um, but I thought I'd just give you a very quick tour around the deck while I had the back of it off. Um, so the fault is with the DBX encoder. So DBX noise reduction and, you know, they're effectively two components, an encoder used for recording and a decoder used when you're playing back a DBX recorded piece of content, um, music, whatever. Um, and the fault was that the right channel would either not record anything, it would be silent, or it would be incredibly loud and very distorted and the right hand meter would be very high accordingly when you're monitoring the tape when recording. And if I played back something encoded with DBX, it was fine. So I knew it's on the encoder side. So anyway, I took the back off the deck. Let's go around to the back now. And DBX board went here. Let's put my torch down. DBX board went there. So I've just unscrewed it and laid it down. And when I laid it down, the fault was still present at the time. It was yeah in the silent mode where it wasn't recording anything on the right channel. And so I took this plastic trim tool here and started tapping various areas of the board so I could work out roughly where the fault was, hopefully. Um, and it's worth adding that this left hand or the lower portion of the board here is the encoder. Just reading the writing on it. Yeah, that's right. And this right hand side here is the decoder. So it's definitely in this side of the board. So anyway, I started tapping away and it would go very loud, you know, the other version of the fault and then be OK for a bit and then go silent. Anyway, tap, tap, tap. And then suddenly the fault won't recur at all. It's working absolutely perfectly. And I've tapped every single component on the board and it won't go wrong now. Um, so I don't think I've got much alternative, but just to put it back together uh, and see whether it recurs. Um, it's not very nice if you listen to something quite loud while you know while you're recording and it goes to the loud version i don't want it to damage a speaker but i just can't get it to go wrong um i'm wondering whether it could be you know one of the connectors was a bit loose i'm not really sure if i buy that or maybe there's lots of little trim pots here maybe one of those wasn't making a good contact with the track and just by tapping it i've you know broken away some dirt or something and now it's making a good contact so there you go so much for fixing it but i can't complain at least it's working i thought i'd just uh show you a few few features inside the deck while we're here so first thing of interest is that this power cable here shows me or suggests very strongly to me um that this deck was uh not originally bought in the uk because it's not double insulated and if i ever sold this deck i would replace that cable i mean i should do anyway just looking at this strain relief and wondering whether I'd have to replace that as well with something that would take double insulated cable. Not sure. I'm sure I could uh, find some way of doing it. Looks like that cable just comes straight up here to the power switch. Don't want to touch that. So this obviously here is mains voltage. Need to be a little bit careful around that. Um, especially during COVID lockdown, we don't want any unforeseen trips to the hospital. Although to be honest with you, I think I'd either survive it or I wouldn't. So hospital probably wouldn't be necessary. Um, so uh, what else to show you? So this board here um, is the logic control board. So this is where all of the controls for tape transport happen. Um, there's quite a lot of ICs on this um, board. I'm not sure get my torch, whether you can see or not. Um, not very well. You'll just have to take my word for it. There are quite a few ICs in there. Um, got a digital tape counter. Um, interesting system uh, that's perhaps worthy of comment is how the uh, real motors are controlled. So they're these two big, chunky DC real motors. Um, you know, a lot of decks like Akai's, for example, have AC field effect motors. Um, but these this deck's got these big chunky DC ones. 
and um, they really get the tape going at quite a speed when you're using the transport, you know, rewinding, fast forwarding. And the way that Teak have achieved this without risking stretching or breaking the tape is that tape tension is used to control the speed of the motors at any time. It has this, um, you know, dynamic feedback control mechanism. And the way that works is if we come around to the front, you see here the tape tensioner. So that's on a spring, which is pulling it down. Um, and the tape pulls up against the spring as it wraps around the, uh, the tensioner. And what happens is, if we go back around to the back, uh, yeah, you can see that quite well. So you see, it gets something to prod with, oops, that was the torch. You see here this curved piece of metal here. So that's attached to the tensioner, and as that tensioner moves up and down, that curve allows more or less light to go between, can you see the two black plastic blocks that are sort of sandwiching the um, the curved bit of metal. So one side is a um, LED and the other side is probably a photodiode receptor. And so depending where that curved piece of metal moves or as it moves, it allows more light from the LED through to the sensor. And so it tells the deck what the position of the arm is. And uh, that is then used to dynamically control how much current is going to the motors. It's really clever and works very well actually. Um, what else? Uh, just a note on very flexible in terms of AC voltage inputs, 240 and 120 volt, and also 220 and 100. So that's got pretty much most of the world covered. Nice big um, transformer there. I have a feeling that's I'm not sure if I'm talking rubbish. I don't think all of these decks had that wider range of voltages, input voltages, but I might be wrong about that. So the DVX board goes here uh, normally. I'll put that back in a moment. Then uh, what else can we show you? you know, it's quite an interesting view of the capstans. Not sure how clear that's going to be. Let's get the torch. Can you see both of them there, the belt between them? Uh, so that's the flywheels you're looking at there. And then the motor is the goldy colored cylinder on the left, um, or sort of in the middle of the picture. So I'm gonna have to take the torch away for this, but let me change direction of the deck and you'll see that the capstans actually have to spin down, change direction and spin back up again before the tape starts recording again. Let's just do that. Uh, make sure I'm pointing at there we go that's reasonable there you go and you notice how the belt shifts in position and that's because those flywheels on the back of the capstan are actually uh, tapered and that's the system by which the tension on the belt is maintained correctly so the belt's going between the motor and the two capstans. Uh, other things of note. So right down the bottom there, in the middle of the picture at the moment, that's the power supply board. Uh, so that's what's rectifying the AC coming out of the transformer for the various DC voltages needed through the deck. And then this board here, we can see the back of right in the foreground. That's the... Uh, all the audio amplifier um, section. Is there anything else of any interest? Um, I think I've covered most of it. So anyway, there we go. Um, Tiek X1000R. It's a lovely deck. I really like it. Sounds absolutely great. Um, and other than that DVX fault, it was working very well. But uh, I suspect I will see it back again at some point in the future when I'm least expecting it, probably. Let's come back around to the front. Maybe I should do another 
video on this deck in a bit more detail just just showing its various features i got another one an x2000r as well um which uh, in in silver which i fully restored that was um i i did a complete tear down on that you know taking every single component apart pretty much including uh the mechanism i'm not sure we can see it from here yeah i mean that that whole you see where the the flywheel's moving, so that's in a sort of little cage assembly. All of that was removed from the back of the front panel because it had been. I bought the deck had spent some of its time in Africa somewhere, and it got obviously very hot, and the grease had um, dried up so much that it turned almost like glue. Um, you know, if I come back around the front, this is stop that. So this button here, the tape lifter. It moves the um, pinch wheels up against the capstans and also moves the, the pins that hold the tape away from the head. They have a name, I can't think what they're called. Moves them out of the way. But let's see if we can see it moving from the back. Try to remember how it works. Yeah, you see, there's that metallic rod that's moving. I think. I'm trying to remember yeah there's a solenoid at the top of that so when you press play it goes kajunk and pulls it up in fact there's two solenoids why are there two? Oh yeah there's one for play and one for pause position but anyway using this tape lifter lever on this x2000r that has spent some time in africa um i couldn't budget it was absolutely rock solid so i felt i had no alternative but just to take the whole thing to pieces and that was um it was quite a fun restoration job actually I'll probably do a video on that deck one of these days as well. Anyway, that's it. I'm going to go and put the board back in place. Maybe the full wicker, hopefully not, and uh, put it back together. Thank you very much for watching. See ya.